This is the second video on this particular theme and in this one we're going to look at ways in which we can get some energy in a sustainable way. One is through a heat pump, a heat pump here, and the other would be through solar panels. So then, can investments allow us to progress along our journey towards net zero, providing a greener way to get our energy? Probably the most obvious choice is an array of solar panels. These collect light energy from the sun and feed it into electrical circuits. The more sunlight, the more electricity. So they obviously provide most yield through spring and summer and autumn. If they are located on a pitch roof, then it should be near to south facing as possible and unshaded. On a flat or slightly angled roof, the orientation is less important. <coughs> The installation likely will be attached to the electricity grid and so any unused power passes into that. A well-designed system will use about 60% of the energy generated. Presently there is no income generating feed-in tariff or FIT for this exiting electricity. Use of the electricity can be achieved in one of three ways. One, it will be switched to be the port of call for any operating electrical device. On a sunny day in the summer, there may be little requirement for that though. Two, it can be diverted to an immersion coil in a hot water tank, thus reducing gas or grid electrical heating to that tank. Three, it can be stored in a battery system for use at another time of day. Battery systems are costly and a standard quotation is for storage for use during the period of a day or so in the summer. A battery system can become an emergency reserve during power cuts. It might also allow you to charge the batteries during low tariff times, typically at night, and provide that for use during the higher tariff periods in the day. Small off-grid systems can be bought or constructed to power particular devices, for example charging computers, vacuum cleaners, drills and electric bikes. Heat pumps, on the other hand, collect energy from ground or air and squeeze it into your indoor space to be used to heat the water there or the air. The gain factor varies with the type of installation, but typically is about 3.5 to 4. In an air-to-air -air heat pump, essentially the unit is an air conditioner operating in reverse. An air or ground-to-water type of pump is akin to a domestic hot water radiator system. The energy source is electricity, but the quantity required is about 20 to 30 percent of the energy used to heat the space. If such a unit replaces a gas boiler, then having a green electricity supply reduces the energy consumption and zeroes the carbon footprint. The relative running cost, though, depends upon the tariffs, and this type of heat pump can be the more costly to install. In principle, biogas is an alternative to natural gas, storing the energy of ancient sunlight. The methane is formed in composters, but much processing is required to match the grid gas. Some countries, like Denmark and Spain, are further down the track of greening their gas supply than the UK. But we should remember that green gas also goes to CO2 on burning, and it needs a larger footprint per unit energy compared to solar arrays. Finally, there are wind turbines. But it is fair to say that most churches and many houses are not located in positions to allow turbine installation from a combination of planning restrictions and relatively low average wind speeds. Our choices then are primarily solar energy and heat pumps. The best option depends upon your location and the consumption patterns that you have measured under step one and also can envisage to take place in the future. This diagram compares the daily electricity we use at home with what might be produced by a 4 kilowatt peak power solar array, about 12 or 14 panels. Unsurprisingly, the unit produces most energy in the spring through autumn, with the cloud cover being very important in a particular month. Indeed, by the reduction methods described in the previous video, 
in greening our energy, we could in 2022 produce excess of energy, providing we store it and use it. But the delivery in the winter months is about 10 times less, when our energy consumption may be 10 times more. In contrast, the gain from a heat pump is entirely proportional to the energy needed. The hatched bars show the electrical energy pulled in from the grid, and the total energy used in the house is the sum of those bars plus the blue ones. That blue proportion is the energy collected by the heat pump. In the summer, the heat pump is only used to heat the water for washing or showers, so little energy is collected. But that changes dramatically in the winter, when the heating extends to the whole house. Now we can split this up a bit further. Now we're looking at the components of the daily energy in red, that is made up of the total electricity in blue, and the extra electric energy collected by the heat pump, which is the space between these two lines. In turn, the electricity, the blue line, is made up from the electricity needed by the pump in dashed green and also by the rest of the devices in the house. In the summer, almost all the electric use is from these other devices. The gain by the heat pump is shown by comparing the gap between the purple and the blue lines, electrically used, and the purple and the red lines, energy delivered. We can add a putative solar into the mix. Roughly, the solar and the heat pump costs are very similar. The conclusions I draw from this on our own circumstance are by comparing August 2021 with July 22, we can see that the changes made by maintenance, temperature settings and a new replacement unit, here the heat pump, can reduce consumption and an appropriate solar system can indeed result in minimal coal on the grid for the warmer half of the year. The heat pump, though, greatly quashes down the electricity consumption during the winter months when space heating is engaged. And for us, this is the larger saving in energy consumption. Next up, then, will be step three of Action for Hope, Travel Smart.